cover within the first few weeks of planting. So, yeah, there's definitely a connection there. <laughs> well, I'm so sorry. I mean, I, I mean, we definitely have had things like tomato blights here in the Northeast, um, which was devastating, I'm sure, to those who were making their living from tomato crops and even those of us who want to can some tomatoes. But um, this is... Um, this is just really terrifying what you're describing, and did, and did people connect it, connect to those dots in the community? You Can know, I think there, when I first started this, I felt like a real lone wolf in the state of Oregon. There was literally a handful of people that are, were aware of this issue, and I just happened to stumble across them online, and they were scattered all throughout the state. Um, since some of the work I've been doing, and, and who knows where else they've gotten their information, but I have seen a huge increase in the amount of people um, around my state that are aware. I have several people in Portland now that subscribe to my YouTube channel that are taking videos and posting them as well. So I know people are waking up in, in record numbers now. It seems it was really slow at first. Mm -hmm. So, um, but it, it it is, I mean, what we're doing is having an effect and it is making an impact on people and people are waking up and that's why I think that it's really important for those of us that have been awake to this issue not to lose heart and to know that what we're doing is making a real difference, you know. It may be a little bit slow. But we need to be there for these people when they wake up. You know, I felt like there wasn't a lot there for me when I woke up to this issue, but but we need to be there for these people and encourage them, you know, because the more people that watch any one of us or all of us, you know, the faster people are going to wake up and want to do something about it. Well, what we, we might hope. I, I mean, I, right. I'm so discouraged that anything is... I think there's something happening here that's way beyond my ability to be an activist and to... Um, and not to discourage people from taking actions, I don't mean to do that at all, but simply to say that for myself this seems like it's way beyond anything that I can imagine. I can't get fully grasp it, therefore, and I don't have any agencies that are um, working. It, it, it just I'm not sure this is going to resolve in the way that you and I might dream that it could if it were a better world. Right. Right. I, I understand. No, I, I understand what you're saying. You know, if it was a perfect world, boy, everybody would wake up all at once and we'd storm all these places and say, stop it, you know, and, yeah. and they would. Yeah. But, you know, yeah, unfortunately, and they, would. <laughs> and they would. They'd mind us. But unfortunately, I think it's going to take, you know, a little bit more than that. Um, Bunny, I was um, hoping to get out of you on... on um, the Bonfire Coalition site, it says that you do work with media, educating um, our government leaders and that type of thing. What kind of work have you done as far as trying to e educate the government workers? Or, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. I, I know that's hard. Well, I think it's time to actually remove that from the, from the site because it's been really a failure in my description of my own senator and the, I mean, I'm, I'm, I have her constituent. You would think there was somebody in the office in Albany or in Washington who could, oh, take a minute at least to, uh, I don't know, dismiss my concerns. That, you know, just talk to me and dismiss me. Don't just dismiss me in silence. So I must say I have very little confidence in the uh, <laughs> Congress to do anything. And they either seem to be brain injured, sorry, but they do seem to be either brain injured or they seem to be on the take. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, and I, I'm, well, I'll just say it, I think the military runs this country. So for us to go to our, uh, or, or forces that are way beyond my senator and her ability, and maybe, maybe by way of her connections with other things like British aerospace, but I don't think that the Congress is running the United States. Uh, I don't know what's happening in the New, New Zealand government, but certainly here, no, I, you know, uh, there is no redress, and that's what we've all this, uh, not we all, but those of our, us I know who have gone to our senators or our congresspeople, or our st you know what happened to me when I the first when I first freaked out about what was going on in the sky, which I, what I was watching, I called my state, New York State um, representative, and um, she, someone from her office, 
actually called my town supervisor, who was actually a friend of mine, to see if I was mentally ill. <laughs> you know, great start. I'm sorry that I'm sorry that I laugh, but no, I'm, it's, I'm laughing with you because yes, yes. <laughs> you, you know, would not, I, and, and the first time I called the media, <laughs> uh, this was back in 2008. First time I called the media and I said, "Do you have any investigative reporters? Because I think there's something happening here that is of of great great importance." And she said, "Well, you don't sound like a crackpot." <laughs> so he, wait a minute I'm delivering you a piece of it well this is of course and then I called um, uh, 60 Minutes is a, uh, I don't know whether that makes it to New Zealand or not but 60 Minutes has been a long respected well within limits um, a television program here where they really just kind of did whatever kind of research was necessary to expose things that, and they've done some really really good research I don't have a TV anymore I don't watch it See it, but I called and I spoke to a producer whom I had known from the garbage, the trash stuff of the 1980s here, and at 60 Minutes, and he said, "Well, I'm not convinced those are anything other than air, you know, jet trails." And I think, and I said, "If I can give you that information that would convince you, would 60 Minutes actually approach this? Because my concern is that you wouldn't want to go up against the U.S. military." He said, "No, no, we don't mind doing that." But I was just not convinced, sure. and I gave up on him, you know, after a year. I it was like, okay, he's not going to see it. I don't know what's in his, you know, what's in his view shed that makes it impossible for him to grasp what I'm grasping. Um, but, um, yeah, so I don't know. I don't have much confidence anymore. Um, and, I, and I should actually maybe write a little piece and put it on the Bonfire Coalition site, not to discourage other people from doing it. I also think that in the, the, our waking up or our coming into greater awareness, we do seem to have to go through certain steps. Um, a lot of people, including myself, I took photographs, all oh, so many photographs for the first yeah. couple of years. It's like you and if I both. take enough photographs, it'll it'll stop, you know. And it's like I, so I don't take photographs very often anymore, and I don't go to my my legislators. We also went to the New York. State, um, not to make this sound like this is all impossible, we went to the New York State um, Attorney General's office. It is their responsibility to defend the people of New York State against any kind of environmental um, issue. And uh, they just could not grasp it. I was talking to one of their, I think a, a young fellow, but I, um, one of their attorneys. He just couldn't figure out how to take this on as an issue. Um, and I just would say to him, go out and look at the sky over Albany, New York. It's happening every day. And even if you can't see this as some global geoengineering horror story, it's still um, pluming. Just think of it as commercial jet trails. Just go with that and just see <laughs> and watch what's happening on a daily basis. The sun is being dimmed. You just couldn't let right. get it. Oh, so, Bonnie, we have a caller. Oh. So Caller, area code 191. Oh, hi, guys. It's R.P. Hunter. I'm just checking in to let you know I'm okay. I hope the show's going well. Oh, hi, R.P. Yeah, thanks for checking in. Did you have a question for our guest? Um, I'm not sure. I just called in, and I haven't been listening, so it would be uh, probably <laughs> Shame on you. <laughs> well, sorry, girls. I had to leave my home it's, and see family. It's okay. Uh, our esteemed guest today is, is Bonnie Hogue. <laughs> from the Bonfire Coalition. Are you familiar with Bonfire Coalition? I believe so. I believe I've heard um, them mentioned or seen some of the posting that they do. Right, and you can find her information on the California Skywatch um, website. So now that right. you know, do you have any questions, Arfi? <laughs> you know, not right off. Um, I know there's a, lot of, uh, there's a lot of important information about chemtrails. I guess um, you probably have already covered this, but going over the difference between an actual contrail and a chemtrail and then some of the major uh, chemicals that are being used that they found evidence for on the ground, I guess. And well, I actually, a... I'm glad that you brought that up because there is a, an opinion out there, and I happen to agree with this opinion, that normal contrails um, are actually a rare phenomenon, and there's something that we don't see very much up in the sky. So even some of these shorter trails that we see that dissipate, that do seem to dissipate quickly, um, 
are not actually real, true contrails, in my opinion. I've seen them here um, over the state of Oregon um, in the dead of winter when it's, you know, 100 plus degrees outside. And, and to me, uh, it, it's really hard for me to believe as low as they're flying that it's minus 40 degrees. Um, fair enough. Right. Is that the, is that <laughs> the breakdown point? Is that where a contrail starts to form is negative 40 below zero? That's what the official um, information says, that in order okay. for, for a contrail to, um, to form, it has to be minus 40 degrees Celsius because it's, you know, considered ice crystals or, or steam like you would see coming out of the exhaust from a car. And, you know, really, along those lines, when you think about it logically, do you ever see, you know, there's times in places like, oh, Alaska and places like that where it's minus whatever degrees and you'll see the exhaust coming off of cars. Do you ever see that, you know, solidify and turn into clouds? <laughs> right, but a car is burning a thimble full of gas per second, whereas a, a jet engine is probably burning a bucket full of gas per second. So it's Well, and there's two different types of fuel, but ice crystals created by exhaust, it would seem to me, um, in in those types of scenarios would act the same, you know, regardless of what the fuel is. It's the, the fact that it's minus 40 degrees or, or whatever, you know, the temperature would be. I'd just like to, to add to this here, guys. I'm, I'm in the unique position, Bonnie, where I see the coast and I also see the mountains. I have a view of both ends. And uh, we'll watch them go through, and they'll lay a um, persistent contrail, a kin trail as we know them, uh, on this site. Um, they they'll come through, and that will well, that will stay there and spread. And then a plane will come through and lay a, a contrail. Often on these uh, so-called sunny days that we have, where we've got this fake blue sky, these jets are just running up and down, laying contrails. There's no no kin trail to be seen but they'll lay these contrails, and, and what it does is it drops the particulate down. We can see it sitting in and around the mountain. I call it Morgellons Mountain now because, oh, you know, anyone awesome. living up there is just under an absolute haze of, of this mess. And so, you know, we, we really need to bust this myth about contrails versus kin trails because those contrails are just as darn poisonous as the kins that they are laying, and, and don't, don't be sucked down that one because, you know, we... <laughs> it, well, it's a big trouble for people. You know. um, those, those contrails are poisonous. There's no doubt in my mind. They're using lots of different chemicals. Producing well, and, lots of different chemicals. and if anybody doubts that whatsoever, look up what the contents of a normal um, contrail, a quote-unquote.